All right, so welcome everybody to our, our second uh, shop talk. Uh, today we've got uh, Flackbox and the networking doctors here. So we've got Neil and Laz uh, from their appropriate sources. Um, you'll be able to see Laz and Neil. Neil is uh, Neil's hard and dedicated in remoting in from a hospital. So we won't be able to see his face, but we'll be able to hear his voice. So that's really good. Um, and today's topic, we're just kind of going to go over, um, we get a lot of questions in our study group and uh, through emails asking why we should you know pay for a service versus why don't i just go on youtube or some other medium and and learn how to pass my cisco cert for free so that's what we're talking about today um and i just kind of wanted to start off uh, there's a lot of things we can get through and we'll just see how it goes but i wanted to start off specifically about uh video courses because there's a lot of free stuff um on youtube and various other channels and i wanted uh you as listeners to get a feel for why all of us think um, you know, a paid service kind of trumps uh, trying to go through a free service. So um, if, if Laz, you wanted to put your two cents in first, and then we can just kind of go from there. Hello, everyone. Uh, definitely, I will always go with a paid service because the quality of the video of the information that's being given is going to be a lot better. If somebody, because an actual instructor uh, that has spent years in the field or years in teaching, it's gonna take time to put a correct course together to give the student the proper information. So, and that costs money because that has value. So you wanna get correct information because you wanna get your certification or whatever it is that you're studying for uh, versus uh, a free that somebody said, well, you know, I'm just gonna put something out there. Here, do this, do this, do this, click here, go there. And then that's it. There's no structure. There's no uh, flow of information. And you're going to end up getting confused, maybe getting the wrong information. And the person that did it almost doesn't care because he's just putting it out there. It's up to you. Whether you like it or not, it's not my problem. Please like it so I can monetize my video and make some money off that. But that's about it. So definitely paid education. And I know I spoke to this uh, previously. It all depends which paid education you want. So you got to make that decision as well. You know what yeah. I mean? But anything that's paid, Definitely, you want to go through, but again, be very specific, especially if you're getting into IT, what paid education, type of paid education you want to go through. I don't know if Neil want to speak on that, but... Uh, yeah, so, I, I so make... yeah, how do you feel? So I guess, Neil, how do you feel, you know, when you're comparing your course, because both, just so the audience knows, both these guys have really good courses. Um, and and uh, so, Neil, how do you feel like, you know, your course competes with, uh, you know, the free courses that you're aware of today? And what are some of the differences you can kind of talk about? Um, yeah, well, obviously, as the last said, quality is a big factor there. But some of the free resources, you, you can find really good quality with free resources as well. So actually, like a, a big factor that I would say is the student's time. Because if you're using free resources, you can't really find a full course for free. So you could look at the topics in the for the exam that you're studying for, like the CCNA, for example. You can easily find the topics, and then you could work through those topics one by one, finding free resources for each one. But the thing is, that would take you a long time. And it's also going to be very hit and miss on the quality of those resources. Whereas if you buy a full course, you know that everything is there for you. It's all laid out in a logical manner. Everything is going to be the same good quality as well. So that saves you heaps of time. You also know that when it's a full course that nothing's going to be missed out. And it takes you through that from step A through to step Z. So that saves you lots of time and, you know, time is money. When, when you're studying for something, it's because you want to reach a final destination and you want to get there as quickly as possible while still getting all the facts along the way. So a paid course is by far the best way to do that. So if you actually look at it, even in terms of money, it actually saves you money because if you were paying yourself for your time that you're spending trying to find these other free resources, you know, 
if you're paying yourself any kind of money at all, it's actually going to work out much cheaper just buying the paid course in the first place because it's going to give you that, that uniform, really good quality. It's going to take you in a logical progression and it, it, it's all there for you in one place. So you don't have to spend your time trying to find it yourself. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, the other thing I would say to kind of to come into that is, you know, you have when you really think about not just your time, when you're, you're thinking and considering about whether or not you should use a free course, you should think about kind of like Laz mentioned, the time it took for that instructor or that co course content author to create the course. Um, you know, if it's anything worth cloud, it's going to take a lot of time. And so, you know, it might take someone up to a year to create a CCNA course. Um, and so you have to ask yourself, well, why would someone do that for free? Um, and the, the, there's really no good answer that I can come up with that someone would just out of the goodness of their heart say, hey, I'm going to do this for free. You know, it's, it's, you know, unless that person is independently wealthy, which I don't know anybody in, in the industry that is, it's, you know, they need to be somehow compensated for their time. And, they're, and, you know, they're putting their life's work and their career on the line for it. Whereas someone who is a free source, they're probably trying to get marketing. They're probably trying to get clicks. They're probably not as business savvy and they think that they might in some indirect fashion profit. And like you said, they don't have that risk of putting their whole career or life on the line. If it's something, if it fails, if their free course fails, it doesn't penalize them in the game of life. Whereas, you know, any of the three of us talking here, if, if one of our courses fails or ends up bad, we can't keep doing what we're doing. We, there's, it comes at a great cost. Um, and so we have to account for that. And we have to put our, our heart and our, and our blood, sweat and tears into that course so like you said, it's, it's efficient and it works and it covers the whole breadth. And that's been my experience too, is a lot of the free stuff, it, um, it's incomplete, uh, it's inaccurate, the audio quality isn't good. Um, and that's just to talk, you know, just alongside the, just the video course stuff. And um, the, other, the other thing I, 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 would, I would urge our, our listeners and you guys to talk about this too, is, you know, consider, you know, if, if you're in a position where you, uh, if, if getting the cert means you have to get it for free, you, you're not going to get the cert and you, you probably, you, you know, you're not dedicated enough. If you, you know, you know, a typical cert, you know, if you, if you, depending on how, what kind of budget are you're on, you can spend, you know, between four and, you know, 500 bucks to get all the material you need. Uh, you know, that's, that's you know, a couple of days worth of manual labor if you want to go do that. So if you, if you don't have the dedication and the fortitude to just go do a couple of days work and save it so you can actually better your life, you're not you're not going to pass the cert and i'm just going to be blunt about that you know if it's if it's it's free 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 you're not you're not doing any work for it so you should question yourself if, if you're thinking well i'm only going to get the cert if it's for free you're not that serious about it then um and that, that that's something that i i you know i would urge people to think about is you know if it's if it's for free it's probably not worth doing so no i agree well i agree with that i think uh it's always up to the type of student that you are. And that's one of the things I did when I did a, a Facebook Live, I think. I talked about, you gotta see what type of student are you? Are, are you the type of student that's self-paced, you can read a book and take a test? Or, uh, you know, it, don't, don't risk wasting time, like Neil said. And that is so true. Because uh, I've YouTube a million things, okay? But again, I had to go through the, all the nonsense that's out there the to try news. and find something that's that's legit that's okay this makes sense and you know i'm sure neil has run into it where he sees other instructors who have as i was told not too long ago street cred and been in the business for years upon years and you see their mistakes just like i'm sure i people have seen my mistake and mm -hmm. we're trying our very best because one of the good things about uh e-learning platforms such as alpha prep is like you know you're going to get feedback on that course of what the student said, hey, listen, you know, or you're going to get questioned, hey, you said this on this minute, second, whatever, what did you mean? What happened? Uh, you know, so you need and then to respond to the student and then because they get you and in, in the back and forth with the free courses, you know, you know, you can put it, put a comment. And I have a million comments on my on my on my YouTube channel that people just say, hey, you know, not very constructive. I'll say it that way. Uh, but I'm all about the instructor that cares about creating a good course, a course that makes sense, it's concise, it takes you from A to Z, as Neil just mentioned, right? If you miss something because you're human, you may miss something, you may make a, a typo, you may make whatever, 
you know, and people, you you say, oh, oh my God, okay, and now you fix it, or you you drill down more on that particular subject. You're gonna care because, as you said, uh, Joe, it's you, our reputation, our career, you know. So we want to make sure we get the best quality, and you're not gonna get the best quality. Anything that's for free is not worth it. I'm sorry. Yes, you can find stuff out there that's not bad that can help you for, to do certain things. But when you're looking at an IT career and you want to get a good paying job, you need to get structured information from people that have been doing this for years. And they have not only the, the teaching experience, but they have the real world experience that they can come through. Yeah, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll shift it over and, and post, this, I'll kind of be rhetorical and shift this to Neil too. Um, and, and I think, you know, this is just a one part of the study process, which is the video lecture course, you know. Um, that we all offer and you know there's there's more facets to learning too and so i guess like i said i'll be rhetorical but part of the reason why i'm happy to be working with both of you guys is you know what happens if somebody utilizes one of your courses and is stuck on a topic and they, and they email you so i guess neil what would you you know a typical how would you approach that with a student that, um you know that was soliciting your services and they were struggling on let's say subnetting like what would you know what would steps would you take with that student um if they were in trouble yeah, that's one of the things I do is I always tell everybody that they can get in touch with me at any time because I know Laz is like this as well, that you can see it with both of our material that we do genuinely care about our students and like the, the best thing that happens is when we hear back from a student telling us that they've passed the exam or even better than that is when they email us and they tell us that they've got a promotion at work or they've got a new position and you know that, that is changing their life. It's great when we hear that. So because we both genuinely care about our students, whenever anybody gets in touch with me, then I'll reply back to them and I'll, I'll help them work through that problem. In fact, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but even, even if they're not my student, like just somebody from some person from the internet that I haven't dealt with before asked me a question, I always take the time to get back to them as well because yeah, I really want to help people. You're an educator, so you're going to help out, you know, as much as you can, definitely. Uh, I And I do the same, I mean, it's depending on, I'll give them my cell number and they'll text me, hey lads, you know, can we meet this time, can we meet that time? And uh, I'll do that. Uh, whatever it takes to, I tell them, whatever you need, you know, the best way to reach me, if I got a good rapport with them and I see the type of student that they are, like this young man that, you know, before the boot camp was even over, he got a C sent. He, and I put tons of tasks for this guy they had to do, and he knocked them out. He was really drilling down. He had the books. He did the questions from Alpha Prep. He did his work. So he's got my cell. And I go, whatever you need, just let me know. The best way to reach me is through text and email as well. Because like Neil said, the best thing that any educator can ever get, the best gift is to hear a student tell you, man, thank you so much. I got the certification. You were, your course was awesome. It helped me out so much. And now they have, you know, a better life, you know, because they're going to get paid more. But I, I want to go back to the thing that you said as far as time. That's crucial. That's crucial. So you got to decide, okay, I want to help the student. I'm going to give them all the work. But then they fall, they say, okay, well, I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. You got to you gotta decide. You just said it. You got to decide, you know, if you're going to do this, do it the right way. Don't waste your time. Get a paid course. Find the instructor, Neil, myself, Prince Brian, whoever, Wendell Odom, whoever it is. doesn't matter. Everybody has a different teaching style. As long as you're getting the correct information, it does not matter. Okay, and I don't care if you're not my student, if you're somebody else's student. I saw that in the in the college where I taught at. I had students from other classrooms coming into my classroom, and I said, "Go ahead, have a seat." You know, what is it you don't understand? I stayed there the whole day when I was, you know, between classes, and students would come in, and that's fine because the whole point of the instructors on these e-learning platforms that I've met and that I've spoken to, or the phone, or Skype, or whatever, is that they really care, and they want to teach you. And they want to educate you and they're giving it to you really you know they're giving it away because if you go to any any college any brick and mortar school you'll be paying thousands 
upon thousands of dollars. You know, I'm not saying that the course is not worth it, but not everybody can handle that. Right. And, you know, and a lot of e-learning platforms are trying to, you know, make it affordable for everybody. What Apple probably is doing is freaking, I mean, come on, seriously, what more do you want? Not only do you have the video courses, not only do you have the questions back, now you're going to have video solutions, okay? You have everything in one place, and that's exactly what the students need. And with instructors like Neil and Wendell Odom and I'm sorry, I forgot this. Um, Kevin, gentleman, Kevin Wall. Kevin, yeah. yeah, and I love him because I used him for my CCMP. I love Kevin. He's awesome. Yeah, we're going to try okay. to get him on one of these shop talks coming up for, the, for everybody to talk to. All right, too, so, so you have the instructors like that that really do care and they actually prepare and you, you, you're going to say, oh, my God, that's all it was? That's all I had to do? Wow, why didn't they say that? Because a lot of these free courses, they do – we know that in education now, it's called gamification. You have to keep them, uh, oh my God, what was it called? You have, to keep their, you have to keep their attention focused, right? You gotta keep them entertained, engaged. Right. You gotta keep them engaged, okay? And the way to do it, you know, you tell here, or, right? or you point out, oh man, I messed up, you know, whatever. That's fine, that's normal, we're humans. We make mistakes. That's why they can, you can build that good rapport with the student. Uh, but free courses, they don't care if they made a mistake, they're not going to go back and say that they made a mistake. They're going to try to cover it up because again, it's free, it's free and yeah. they don't have any responsibility to the student. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of a testament to our industry in, in the fact that you have, I mean, you, there's really, there's three independent businesses talking right now and we're all on the same page and that is, is, is getting back to the students. So there's, there's not. You know, you'll notice if you're a listener right now and you're watching, you'll notice that n none of us are in this cutthroat um, environment. We're, we're all encouraging others to go learn from anybody, and we don't care who it is. And and even if even uh, you know, Neil Neil even said this: if you know, if you have someone else's course and you email me, he he he'll get back to you. And it's the same for all, all the three of us. And that's why I really like getting the three of us sitting down. But um, you know, you need it's it's so important to when when you have you know. These, these free versus paid services is like you know whose whose uh, 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 horse are you going to hitch you know the cart to you know and, um, and that's kind of it it's like you know we're, we're we will be there for you we'll get an answer for you um, if you know you can you can call us and schedule a meeting just like we're having and, and you know you know Laz might have some switches in the background and show you how to plug things <laughs> improperly might show you the difference between cabling if you're struggling with that you know that, that's obviously a basic concept um, uh, but but regardless. You know, there, there's. I, I think it's really important to just kind of plan a flag for people to see that everyone talking in this meeting, and there's, there's others as well, will, will bend over backwards to make you successful. It's, it's you know, it, that's that is the reward we get out of what we do. I mean, that's that's why we're doing this job, and we want to do that. It makes us feel good. You know, um, I, I can safely say that none of the three of us, unless I'm completely wrong here, are driving around in a Ferrari. It's, it's not, no, no. yeah, it's not, this is not, you know, this, this business, the business we're in is not to become, you know, a, a, a Google and air, you know, it's not, it's not how it is. It's, it's, it's an education based business and we love what we do. So, um, I guess we'll shift again and, and we'll, we'll kind of keep, we'll keep everybody, you know, try to get everybody's airtime equal. So we'll shift over to Neil and then talk about the other part of, um, that we, we, you know, we talked about vi video solutions and we talked about kind of. Uh, instructor accountability that you get um, but then also it's like now you know with any any anyone that you know solicits any of our services is, is going to get a question bank so um, we can talk about how that as a as a paid service as, as a managed question bank versus I would say something as someone who tries to download free questions or download dumps and we can talk about the comparisons of uh, someone uh, you know a company you know, that's managing a question bank versus the free questions because that's a big I think that's a big important topic to address too. You take that, Neil? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sorry. I was just unmuting my mic there. No. Yeah. But one, well, comparing Alpha Prep with what else is out there, and kind of like the elephant in the room here is that people will try to use these brain dumps. And to talk about when, with the CCNA, with the three of us, that's what a lot of the people that will be watching this will know us most for the CCNA. 
And it's not just for the CCNA, but it's one of like the main examples of this is that the, the brain dumps for the CCNA, even before we talk about like the moral issue, are almost all not very good to use. Beca and one of the reasons is that the CCNA, it's gone through multiple different versions. And what happens with the brain dumps is they don't remove questions that are not used anymore. So if you have a look at pretty much any of the brain dumps you can find out there, you'll find something like a thousand questions in the CCNA brain dumps. And the amount of time that you would spend trying to read through all those questions and memorize them, you could spend it better by just learning the material properly in the first place. And then you'd be able to do the job when you actually get it as well, rather than just knowing some like basic facts that, that are kind of out of context. Another thing with brain dumps, and again, this, this applies not just to the CCNA, but pretty much all exams, is very commonly they have got lots of wrong answers in them. And for you to be able to recognize the wrong answers, again, you need to know the actual material. So that time that you spent trying to memorize a brain dump, you'd be better just learning the material again. Another reason that they're bad is that you're not going to get a job just from having the certification. The certification is going to get you the interview, and then during the interview, you're going to prove that you're the best person for the job. Well, if you're a paper CCNA or a paper whatever qualification it is, and you don't actually know what it is that you're talking about, you're probably going to be embarrassed in the interview. Because if the company does a technical interview, which they almost certainly will, you're not going to know the answers and you're going to look really bad in the interview. And this has got a knock on effect as well in that you're, you're not going to just not get that job. But the IT industry, it, it, the world tends to be a small place now and people talk. And if you do spectacularly bad in one interview because it becomes clear that you're certified, but you don't know what you're certified in, then people are going to talk and you're going to get, you know, it's quite possible that the next job interview that you show up, that will be, you won't even get the interview because if it becomes known, if your name is known as somebody that doesn't really know what they're talking about, it's going to, you know, it's, it's really hurting your prospects. So what you want to do is, you want to first off learn the material properly. Now, this is where alpha prep comes in because, because the vendors know that brain dumps are out there. One of the main ways that they fight against this is by making the questions more difficult, by making them ambiguous. Now, personally, I don't particularly agree with this because what can happen is that somebody can actually know the material but they can still fail the exam because the questions are very difficult. So first off, you need to learn the material, but then to actually pass the exam, you want to have exam practice as well. And that is where Alpha Prep comes in. So with Alpha Prep, you know that it's perfectly legal. You are partnered with Cisco Press, which is obviously, you are obviously associated with Cisco. So students are not gonna get in any trouble from taking the alpha prep practice test. It's that, you know, Cisco are actually on board with this and they're happy about that. So from a moral and from a legal standpoint, you're protected when you use alpha prep. And also it's going to give you that exam practice where the questions on alpha prep are very, but it's not the same questions, but they're very similar to the type of questions that you're going to get on the real exam. And you really need to get that kind of practice to get you over the line on testing. Uh, I feel like I've been talking for quite a while there. <laughs> no, so, it's fine. Yeah, so, so I will ahead. hand it back over. Sorry, right, on, no, on you go, Manish. I think I think our CSM and ACD are we're colliding too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what what is Neil? Uh, he hit it on on the nose. I mean, brain dumps. Not only are they illegal, uh, full of, as you said, full of wrong questions. I've seen schools, brick and mortar schools, that use brain dumps for their students and they've lost their licensing, okay? Not only the school, 
Uh, Microsoft at one point back in the 2000s, uh, they were taking people's certifications because people were buying these brain dumps with their credit card. They took away their certification. And yes, the most embarrassing thing is because now employers out there are actually doing, uh, the HR person is not doing the interview anymore. It's the IT people that are giving you yep. the interview. If you're going to go for the IT job, it's the IT director or his right-hand person that's going to give you the interview. And they're going to put you in a scenario based, okay, if you have this issue, what are you going to do? I mean, obviously, there's certain things that the CCNA is not going to cover, but you can at least understand the concepts, like Neil said. Understand the concepts so you're able to at least answer somewhat intelligently if it's very proprietary to that company. You're not going to know it because a lot of companies use their own proprietary uh, software or applications. Uh, they have their own standard operating procedures that they do things. So everything is not cookie cutter. And that's what people need to understand as well. But brain dumps, definitely, you don't want to just memorize, oh, A, B, 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 A, A, B, B. That's, that's not going to work. You need to know because what if they ask you, all right, go inside the communicate, telecommunications closet, uh, the server room, whatever, and uh, punch down this cable. And the reason I'm using this example is because this would happen to not of one of my students, all right? And now the school that I was teaching at, it was the school that lost their license. He didn't know what a punch down tool was. He didn't know what a patch panel was. So if you are Cisco certified, if you are a MCSC or MCSA or Network Plus for that matter, and you don't know what a punch down tool is, you don't know what a patch pallet is. You don't know, you know, the, the, the standards for the cabling. I mean, seriously. So the brain dumps, the free questions, no, don't do it. Don't do it. You may get the paper. You may get lucky. And you now, hey, I'm a CCNA. I'm an MCSE. I'm an A+. Plus. You're certified from here to there, right? But when you go to the interview, like Neil said, you're going to pass. You're going to be embarrassed. And this is a small world. This is small world in IT. You're going to be known as the person that doesn't know anything. That doesn't know anything. Uh, you're just paper. So paper is your ammunition. I've always said it. Whether it's a degree, whether it's a certification, a certificate of completion, it's just to fill up your portfolio. That's it. Hey, these are the classes I've taken. This is what you know I've done. All right. But not hey, sit me in front of a computer. Let me really show you what I I can do. All right, and that's the important thing also about labs. You know, alpha prep, like uh, it's, it just encompasses everything. And again, it's up to the instructor as well to give the labs out there. There's a lot of classes that I don't like it, uh, that I I do a lot of PowerPoints. I try to give, you know, that's why I do things in front of the camera. I try not to do too much stuff, desktop recording, especially if it's a PowerPoint, because I don't think I have that beautiful of a voice I'm not as articulate as I want to be. So, you know, I use the funny t-shirts, you know, the ball headed guy and all that good stuff, but I give them the information that they need, uh, which is important. But definitely what Neil said, man, is so true. Don't do the brain dumps. It's illegal. It's just, you're fooling yourself into thinking just because you got a piece of paper that you know what you're doing. But at least with alpha prep, you know, you're, not, you're getting a 6,000 question back. Hello? And you're getting the, the right, so they're giving you a video or written solution uh, for that particular question. So if you study that and you do it the right way and learning the material, like Neil said, man, you got it. You got, you're going to get the test. You may not score 900. You may just get, you know, one point. Oh, what's the passing score now? It was like 825 or something like that? Yeah, I think it's a, a sliding scale or, or, or depending on, yeah, but something around there. It, it's in the low 800s, yeah. Yeah, it's the low 800. So... You may get just one point above that, but guess what? When you go to the interview, you're going to kill it because whatever question they ask you, not whatever question, but for the most part, you're going to be, be able to answer intelligently. At least that's my take on it. Yeah, and I think it's good. And then I'll kind of um, summarize that and then we'll go on. I, I, I try to promise myself I wouldn't go over 30 minutes. So we're going to go just over uh, for the audience. But if you're still with us, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's so true. I, I, one of the biggest uh, dilemmas I had uh, when just going through how we were structuring our packaging for Alpha Prep was, um, you know, we have a package where you can just buy the question bank. And I lost a lot of sleep over that because I didn't want, you know, the, the hope, my hope, and if you are this person, this is great. And if you're not, you need to rethink this. 
my hope was that people who were who studied separately and and knew the material and had done their labs and were very familiar could use that as just a supplement and if that's who you are that's how you should use just the question bank package if you're just getting a small one if you're someone who who's going to be using our service just to go through the question bank and that's it and you plan to pass the test that's there's a chance that you're going to pass the test if you can if you can manage to get to your earn level you'll you will pass the test but like you said it's the way an interview works in the real world today and this is how all all of them work is uh the the certificate will get you past hr like you said hr takes it first they're going to look they're going to verify that you're certified and they're going to say, okay, now IT team, now you can interview this candidate. And then they're going to sit you in the hot seat. And that just is what it is. And depending on the company, they're going to do a variety of different things. And you're going to need to be able to kind of defend yourself and, and, and prove your worth. Um, and so that's why it's not just a question bank. It's not just going through exam questions. The exam questions are probably the single most effective thing you can use to pass the test. But you truly are fooling yourself if you think, I get my cert, I get a job. Um, it's just not, that's why we have video lessons. That's why we have you call us and work through labs. That's why you learn what a punch down tool is and how to operate it. That's why you learn how to crimp a wire. That's why you learn how to make a crossover cable and, and, and actually connect you know, different networking devices and, and understand all of those things that you need to know that go beyond just the question bank. So it's you know, I really urge you if, if, to rethink your strategy if you're someone who doesn't have that experience and just wants to go into a brain dump or a site download or even just use, you know, just go to Alpha Prep and get the questions. You need more than you really do. We want to take care of you because the goal is not to pass the cert, right? You're not, you, your goal, if, if, you, if you're watching this, should not be my goal is to get the cert. And I would think you'd be crazy if that was your goal. Your goal is to get a job and to better your life. And so there is a bigger picture. And, and so with that, I, I think this will, this will kind of go well into, uh, I was going to do a couple of questions, but let me just do, we had a question um, from our, um, our study group. Um, and so let me just bring that up. It was from a gentleman, and I'll uh, apologize if I get your name wrong. Let me look for it here. Um, so I, I wrote uh, just in our study group, and I said, hi, everyone, uh, next week that I'll, I'll be meeting with Neil Anderson and Laz, and I asked them to have, if they had any questions to ask us. So this comes from, um, uh, I'm just going to spell out the, the first name because I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, and I apologize. Uh, it is N-O-N-H-L-A-N-H-L-A. -A -A. Um, it's uh, Maybe it's it's like uh, from Hawaii or some, something like that. But So the question was, you know, he said, struggling uh, to get a CCNA job without experience or related diploma, what would you suggest? Um, and so, the, you know, the, the, uh, I'm not sure if this individual has their cert or not. So I guess there's two trains of advice that we could, and I'll leave it to you guys to give him. So I don't know if he has a cert or not, but, you know, there would be one subset of advice if he already does have his cert and then another subset if he doesn't. So I guess, Neil, I, I guess this question is, like, you know, what, what would your advice be to this guy? He says, he's, let's, let's assume he does have his CCNA cert. If you don't have your cert, uh, real quickly, sign up with one of, one of our services and, and, and get your cert and work with us. That's step one. That'll get you into the door. And we'll help you with interviews. But let's assume he has a cert um, and someone who's just struggling to kind of understand the industry and get out there. Neil, what would you recommend uh, their kind of broad stroke steps to be? Yeah, it, it sounds like they've got the Shishini already. And it's actually a question that I get asked quite often. And the answer I give is the same as what I did. And People often don't like hearing this answer because it means they have to get a little bit uncomfortable and put themselves out there. But the recommendation I always give, if somebody's got the CCNA and they're struggling to get a job, that's probably because yeah, they don't have any experience yet. And so it's kind of a vicious circle there. And the way to break it is by volunteering somewhere. That's exactly what I did. And what you can do is, I mean, everybody has family and friends. What you can do is reach out to them. And usually it's easiest if it's somebody that's working for a large company, but it's got an actual IT team. Although even if it's like a really small IT team, that can work as well. And what to do is just say, hey, you know, can I come and work for free with the IT team, please? Hopefully they've got some kind of spare time that's going to allow them to do that. So then what they can do is, you know, just find anywhere an IT team that you can go and work with for free. And the way that you can package yourself where they're going to want to do it, you know, allow you to do that is you can say, hey, 
I'll do anything you want me to do. I will make, I'll go fetch your teas and coffee, coffees for you. If you've got any boxes that you need carrying anywhere, I'll carry the boxes for you. If anybody needs to crawl under um, desks and do any cabling, I'll do that for you. You know, I just want to just get some experience. I'll come hang out with you. Uh, you know, I'll do any jobs you want me to do. And then what happens is if you do that for a certain period of time, like I ended up doing it for around three months, and what happened at the end of that three months was I had three months IT experience that I could put on my resume. And I also got a reference from the people there as well, which you know proved it and proved my character as well. And another thing was the three months I was there, I soaked up loads of information from the guys that I was hanging out with, and I learned how IT works in the real world. So again, I mean, you know, you, it's an uncomfortable thing to do to actually go and put yourself out there and offer your services for free. But an advantage of this is that because of that, most people don't do it. So the way that you get ahead in life is by hustling. So you have to show a bit of hustle. Now, for people that, you know, this doesn't affect a lot of people. With a lot of people, they can pass for CCNA and that will get them the job and they don't have this problem. But for people that do have the CCNA and are struggling to find work, don't be a victim. Don't sit there and complain about it. You have to do something about it. Nobody's going to do anything for you. And what you can do is put yourself out there, offer your services for free if need be. That will get you your, your first foot in the door, and then you can work your way out from there. Yeah, I think that's a great that's a great answer. Um, do you have anything to, 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 to throw on top of that, Laz? Oh, yes, I do. I, mean, I agree with him. Put your stuff out there, you know, for free. But that's what everybody does, uh, just so you can get the experience. But I can tell you what I did, because I was one of those guys that I was certified. I knew my stuff, but nobody would give me the opportunity. So whatever job came along, I tried to weasel my way into the IT department. But one of the things that got me out there was I said, you know what? I'm, I don't want to work for nobody. Okay, if I can't get a job, I'm gonna start doing. I start. I opened up my own company. All right, no big deal. You know, Office Depot credit, uh, business card, twenty bucks. Started passing them out. Went to these warehouses areas. Started, like he said, hustle. I started passing my cards out. Hey, Good I advice. fix computer. I repair computers. I fix networks. I do security. Whatever, whatever. So you go to dentist office, lawyer's office, warehouses, do whatever, and and just you know, don't press yourself that high, but don't undersell yourself either, because then you put yourself too low, they're going to say, oh, pff, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. That's why he's so cheap. So, but you know, you, you, you find out more or less what people are, are charging out. I think back then they were charging like $120 a drop or something like that. So put yourself at a hundred dollars a drop or something like that. So would you go and, and I don't know, 15, 20 bucks an hour, but at least now you're, you know what you're doing. If you don't, you better figure it out real quick. <laughs> All right. And go out there and get the job done. And that's how I got myself out there and getting the experience. I said, I'm gonna just do it on my own. Some people never paid me, but at least I said, I have a name of a company. I did this for them and I had them as a reference. So it's okay, listen, don't pay me, but I wanna use you as a reference. Is that okay? Yeah, no problem. Cause I did try going to jobs and uh, again, the, you know, weasel my way into the IT department, but it was difficult. I don't know, maybe I sound a little bit too abrupt. I'm too, you know, forward i'm not you know hey what's up you know, i'm not like that and that didn't work out for me but what did work out was that putting myself out there trying to get clients and i've seen a lot of uh people that i know that that's what they did and they were actually very successful uh in opening up repair shops and stuff like that that they did so and i was that was when i was in, down in miami i'm in orlando now uh and then I just got the opportunity to start teaching. And that's when I said, hey, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. But on the side, I'm still going to continue fixing and repairing so I can always stay up to date. So put yourself out there, like Neil said, either free or, hey, go to Office Depot. Get a 20 and you get, you know, for 20 bucks, you get like 100 cards and say that you do all these things and, and start getting your own experience. See what's going on. And it's going to be scary at first, but do it. Just don't undersell yourself. Don't undersell yourself. I, I you know, I have to admit, uh, that's a very awesome approach. Uh, I, I took a similar approach to Neil, and I think it's good that now that this this person has, uh, you know, two. You know, I was the same thing. I I, uh, I was at a healthcare company, and I, I got in on a trial internship, and I had my cert, and 
I didn't even get to touch um, a switch or a router until about four months in. And I was, I, no joke, I was unboxing com uh, computer boxes and stacking them and putting them away for just, I mean, hours and hours and doing all the grunt work and to get my way. And then it was like, hey, you know, I really, I have my networking cert. I'd like, and eventually I worked my way up, same thing. And they would, you know, to the point where I was doing scripts to, you know, to add voice VLANs on the ports. And they're like, I was the go-to guy. Another gentleman who's older was the go-to guy as well for switch work. Um, and so, you know, you, you, that's, that's, so Neil, I think Neil put out a good approach and I really like that approach of, you know, if you're losing nothing. If you're trying to get a job right now, don't wait on the company. Don't, don't, don't put yourself in the victim category. Go out. I think it's, it's such, so simple. I'm actually, I kind of feel like compelled. I should go try that just for fun. You know, print out, print out some business cards and drop them off and say, hey, I, you know, here's my set of skills that I can do. And you know what they are because if you've gone through the cert and if you've gone through some good training, um, you should be able to run a drop. You should be able to, you know, go through and, and, and set up some basic VLAN stuff for people if you need. I mean, there's, you, know, you could do all of those things and just, like you said, go to a dentist, go to whatever. And it might even just be computer repair. They might even just want you to come in and, and just, exactly. you know, add some add some Active Directory accounts. But, um, yeah, so – um. So just to sum it up, if, you, if um, to the person that asked that question, if you want any more specifics, um, feel free to, to contact either Neil or Laz or myself individually to get a more tailored um, piece of advice for you, and, and we'll be happy to help you out. Absolutely. And if you don't have your cert, um, you know, talk to all of us and, and, and work with one of us, and let's get you certified because that's that's a really big step too. So I, I think that's we're at a good spot, and, and I'm going to just stop recording. And uh, for all those who listen, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you uh, probably in a couple weeks next uh, recording.